And now, suspense. I stretched out my shrunken hands. I was starving with hunger. I broke off a sprig and chewed it down. Then, lo and behold, the miracle. Believe it or not, within 15 minutes, the fever had left me, and I was a new man. Yes, my friends, manna fell from the blessed sky. For there, within my grasp, I held a pack here to end all human ailments. I prudently gathered an armful of the precious herb and reached civilization. Ever since that happy day, it has been my mission to manufacture it in the form of pills and sell it in the marketplaces of England. Now here within this little bottle is the distilled elixir, which we may purchase for the price of only one shilling a bottle. Now who will be the first buyer? One shilling is the price. My girl, I haven't got all day to wait. Don't you wait your turn. Who do you think you are? Henry VIII or the fat boy? You pick him. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite a comedian. She ought to be in, in the music hall. <laughs> <laughs> you got the looks for it. Oh, thank you for nothing. Now, what'll it be? Edit, whiting, play, song? Well, when I first came in, I fancied a nice piece of Dover soul. But now that I've seen you, I can think of something I like better than fish. Such as? Such as a little kiss to whet my appetite. Here, you take your hands off me, you... That's a nice little fripper you got there. What's your name? Beatrix. My friends call me Bee. Bee, eh? Yeah. A little honey bee? Oh, you ain't <laughs> half got a nerve for a stranger. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna stand here all dirt, chewing the fat. Oh, anybody think he got the play? All that's the matter, please. Say, who do you think you're pushing? I don't think I know. A fake, that's who I'm pushing, a fraud. Who is a fraud? You are, you great fat bladder of lard. I happen to work in the chemist shop here. I took his panacea, as he calls it, to my governor. I had him analyze them pills. Nothing more than bicarbon sugar. Bicarbon oh, sugar, that's what they take are. Take back those words. Dr. Potterson. Dr. Mayard. You're a dirty lion quack. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. He sold his last pill in Hollingford. Dr. Blasted Potterson. That's right. Now, you just know that. That's a good thing. And here within this little bottle is the distilled elixir, which you may purchase for the price of one shilling a bottle. Now, who will be the first? Who will be the first customer? Hey, wait. It might be a good notion to buy some from him. Then he might remember you later. We'd get down to the real business, eh? Yes, but you'd better stick here. I don't want him to see you yet. You'll need all your wits about you for the job you do on him later. I won't be long. Robo That's them, all right. Clean shaven, dark complexion, five foot nine, check cap. And the girl, red hair, pretty, turned up nose, check skirt, straw hat, stockings bead. I, uh, I wonder why they split up. Oh, we've got to keep our mince pies glued on it. The inspector says we must not let them out of our sight. And when Scotland Yard moves in on a job, you can take it from me, they're likely to be pretty slippy customers. Now, what about you following him and me following her? Skirts will be your ruin one day, my lad. And I tell you what, as your superior officer, you will follow him and I will follow her. Yes. The price is one shilling. As a special offer, I'll make it nine pence. I'll make it six pence. But six pence only to the first buyer. Officer! Oh. 
I'll pay sixpence. I'd like a box of your pills. Your round physique is a very good advertisement. <laughs> you, sir, do honor to your forefathers. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I will give you this box, and I will give you back your sixpence. Whoa. Take this at concentrated health as a gift from me to the most sensible person on the entire village green. Thank you, sir. That's most generous of you. I hope you have a very good day, doctor. Best of luck. <laughs> Who will be the next? Yeah, I will. got his attention all right. He'll remember me. Good, let's go over to the Crown Boys. They're set to be there within the hour. Come on. What went on? How do I know? He bought a box of those fake pills and then came over here to the girl. Blessed if I know what's going on. What did the bloke say to her? He just caught the last phrase. Something about getting a good place over at the pub. Oh, oh, did he? Well, our instructions are to stick to their heels, so we'll go and get a good place over at the pub. That, my boy, is what I call combining business with pleasure. Hi, Mum. How about another gin? Oh, put some peach bitters in it. All right, right. gin and peach bitters, eh? Yes. All right. That little bit of fluff's developing quite a thirst. That's her third gin. Yes, she certainly has a capacity. Can't you use any word under three syllables? Good evening, oh. my friend. Oh, Master Thomas. Good evening, my friend. What's going to do with your As for your dog, double martel and dry ginger. Here, ma'am, I'll save you the trouble of my drink. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Thirsty weather, eh? Yes, a bit too thirsty for me. Well, you're in the best place in the world to put that right. Yes, it'd be better off if only bought me another drink. <sighs> Won't he? No, not him. He's afraid I'll get drunk. Now I ask you, do I look the type of woman to you who get drunk? I should say not. Here, have a drink on me if your fellas to mean to give you one. Hush, be quiet. He might hear you. Then he'd knock you down. Who, him? Yes. Don't tell me this is your consort. I seem to know the face. I was your first customer. Why, of course! The most sensible man in Gladwin. You sure sold a lot of sense to pick this high-stepping filly for your wife. I suppose I did. Better watch out. Somebody might steal her from you. You'll join us in a drink, won't you? Yes, don't mind if I do, thank you. I'll have a bitter. Ma, find a bitter? Another double for me. Your wife was just warning me about you. Oh, he's a regular target when he gets roused, ain't you, Fred? Yes, I can see he's a holy terror. A real fighting man. <laughs> That's my motto in life. Fight and win. If you want wealth, fight for it. If you want to talk to a pretty woman in a pub, there's no reason why you shouldn't. Or is there? <laughs> he is hoping. Oh, you have bought a swallow. Oh. Yes. I don't like the way the wind is blowing. For once in your life, you've said something right. It's going to be a stormy night. something and you're a real man in the fullest sense of the word you'll take it I make my own rules in life here feel that muscle it's strong as iron I wage I could kill a man with one blow of my fist tonight if I was driven to hey kill I well I wouldn't want to get in a fight with you my lad my dear you'll never have to be afraid of me in that respect I've never raised my hand against a woman in my entire life. But if it's a man I'm up against... What would you do, Doctor? Do? It wouldn't be nice for a woman to know. 
What's so funny? <laughs> it's you what's funny, that's what. We ain't so fools, you know, even if we do buy your sugar and soap pills. What do you mean? You're a bragger, that's what you are. I'll wager that you've never done anything in your own life. Oh. I'll tell you, when I was attacked at the Amazon by wild Indians with poison darts, I put three of them to sleep with my bare fists. They're foreign places. It's here what matters. My wife's quite right. If you was to kill a man in England with your bare fists, You'd be copped by the police and you'd swing within three months. <laughs> You're afraid of the coppers. <laughs> I would be, if I committed murder. Murder? Who in the name of 10,000 devils is talking about murder? I still say, if you're a real man, you're not afraid of the police or anything else in the entire world. Here, my fellow up. Then, then it, it, it's your creed, Doctor, that if a man has courage, he can commit murder and not be found out, eh? Ah, uh, certainly. What do you think happens if a fellow pulls a really well-planned affair? The coppers don't cop him. That's all. Wrong. They are not even called in. The verdict is... Accident or suicide? Sounds like if I ever wanted to kill anyone, I, I could come to you for advice, eh, Doctor? I flatter myself I could tell her a point or two. And I don't think I could ever kill anyone. Not that there aren't people who deserve to, deserve to be under the sod. One in particular. Whenever I think of him, my blood goes all curdled like inside of me. Rolling in wealth he is and did me out of my share of my father's will. Every time I see him stepping into his first cloth's carriage, I'd like to bash his smug dial to a pulp. That's good, Willie. I'm glad you have some real red blood trickling through your veins. Anyhow, I doubt if even you could tell me how to get rid of this blackguard. Uh, He's so scared of burglars, nobody could ever get into his house. <laughs> if you can't kill him in his house, kill him in the street. What's so funny about that, Mr. Know-It-All? I tell you that you couldn't no more knock off this fella any better than my husband could. Ah, there's always a way. There's always a way. All right, then. Tell us the way. Tell me, husband, the way, Dr. Cheap Jack. All right. I'll take up the challenge. I'll undertake to tell this underling how to eliminate this enemy he has a grudge against. But first, I must know who the victim is going to be. Now, tell me, my little man, who is it you have an urge to remove from this veil of tears? I'd like to murder my brother. So you want to murder your brother? Give him his quietus, as the bard puts it. I'd like to see him lying dead at my feet. You heard what he said, Mr. Know-It-All. Now prove your boasting. You got a test case, me husband's brother. Why the devil do I know what the best plan is if I don't know the man or anything about his ways? I'll tell you anything you want to know. All right. But first, I want to make it clear to this bucolic assemblage that a weary willy here intends to commit a, a crime and follow my plan. I'm in no way responsible. Now, is that clear? <laughs> now, tell me, Weary Willie, where does that black-hearted brother of yours live? Millport. That's six stations from Gladwin here. If I remember, you mentioned something about his traveling first class in the train. Oh, he lives in a house like a mansion and has a couple of Rolls Royces. Made his fortune doing other people down here. Wait a minute, if he has a couple of Rolls Royces, why would he bother traveling in a train? Because he's a flaming miser, that's why. Because the railway fare is cheaper than petrol. Fui. But it's easy. It's easy. The man's got to be killed on a train. How? Tell me, is this creature a man of habit? He runs his life like clockwork. Catches at 9 o'clock in the morning, sits in his office all day, and takes a 6.30 back home. And it's easy. You gotta board his train, go in the next compartment, yes. make sure both compartments are empty. Most likely they will be as he travels first class. 
Then what do you do? I suppose you strolls in as bold as brass and you strangles him with your bare hands. The way you did the night shift in the Amazons, eh? Wrong again, Mrs. Clever. You gotta use a weapon. Oh, a weapon, eh? He means what the police calls a blunt instrument, Ducky. I get you. It's a golf club or a croquet <laughs> mallet, eh? No, it's too big. He would notice it. A carpenter's mallet might be more to the point. I'm a carpenter myself by, by trade. There's a little mallet about so big we sometimes work with. That'd be a handy thing to beat out somebody's brains with. Massive. A small sized mallet is just the thing. All right, Doc. So you've got your weapon. You're in the train by yourself. The man I want to kill, my brother, is in the next compartment. So what? What do you do next? I'll tell you. Naturally, you don't carry the thing you're going to kill him with right out in the open. It's got to be hidden. So you carry a bag, a black glass stone bag for choice. It's so unobtrusive. Ah, uh, then what do you do? Why don't you dash in and finish him off pronto? The sooner the better, I'd have thought. That's just where you'd hang, weary weary, and I wouldn't. You know, it's, it's nice, but still people are always watching trains. Little kids from back windows. you got to wait your opportunity when no one can see you. And where might that be? Huh. There's a good-sized hill between Tweedler Station and Oxney Flitch. That's right, Doctor. Now, how does a train go through a hill, huh? It doesn't climb over it. The tunnel, of course, the tunnel. That's a brilliant stroke, Doctor. The tunnel, did he get it? They're certainly getting a plan out of him. Let's get a bit closer. We mustn't miss a word of this. There's one thing. Suppose, when you rush into the compartment with the mallet, he puts up a fight and pulls a communication cord. Ah, you fool. Who's talking of rushing in with the mallet and killing strangers? We are talking of taking revenge on somebody who's wronged you. Somebody you know and somebody who knows you. Traveling first class. I said a bit of luck. Fortune smiled at me at Ascot. I won three thousand pounds. What are you going to do with it? Blow it all back to the bookies? Oh no. I've seen the light. I've learned my lesson. I'm going to buy me a little tobacco business. Well, I'm very glad to hear it, for my sake, as well as yours. From now on, perhaps you won't keep pestering me for cash and drop this ridiculous notion that I've cheated you. I will never disturb your peace again. From this day forth, I promise, you can sleep sound. I always forget this blasted tunnel! 
That seems pretty watertight, Algernon. And neat, to say the least of it. Most ingenious. Now comes the real problem. You've killed a man. Nobody's seen you. But what do you do with the body? That's been the downfall of most criminals. Hi, you ain't so dumb after all, Fred. And you ain't out of the woods yet, Dr. Cheap Jack. What do you do with the body? Hey, you all got the brains of nuts. Naturally, you've got to dispose of the body. That's easy to any man of brains. Now, isn't there a river to cross with a big bridge just before you come to Oxley Flint Station? That's right, Doctor. Well, come on, you little little sheep. Use the imagination. The train crosses the bridge. You open the door. You pick up the body. And you throw it out the window. It's down into the river. It's a 20-foot drop with rocks. They find the body. Poor fellow. He had an accident. Smashed his head against the rocks. <laughs> now is that a good plan? Now is that a good plan? Foolproof! Foolproof you win the argument. And now perhaps you'll have a last drink for the road with me and Nelly. We must be on our... No, way. everybody has a drink on me. The drink's on me, my Ferra. Ferra. You know, Doctor, I've been thinking. Your plan ain't so foolproof after all. There's a flaw in your ointment, so to speak. What flaw? The melon, Doctor. What about the melon? You can't throw it into the river afterwards. It might be washed ashore somewhere. My old gal's got you there. The mallet, the mallet. The mallet, Doctor, tell us. What would you do with it, the mallet? The mallet. The mallet. Isn't there a slag heap just by the gas works? An incinerator where they burn the rubbish? It's right, love, there is, right beside the railway line. There's your answer. You take the mallet, you throw it on the slag heap, and in two minutes it's burned to a cinder. So that's how you did it, Patterson. You haven't been telling me how to kill my imaginary brother. You've been reliving a crime you committed yourself. What are you talking about? I have suspected it ever since we found that, that half-burned mallet on the slag heap. Parker Patterson, alias Richard Morley, I arrest you for the murder of Alderman David Raines on the night of December 12, 1910. Nice work, boys. Thank you. Nice work. Always proud to cooperate with Scotland Yard, sir. Who the devil are you? Scotland Yard. I'm a detective, and this is my wife. Me, you both rotten. That will be your privilege, Patterson. And incidentally, I don't accept gifts from murderers. Here is your life-giving herb, although I don't think it will do you much good when you're dangling from the end of a rope. Take him away. 